Hey guys, and welcome to Pool Shed Games. I am Andrew, sometimes known as the Lich Lord, and today I'm going to be talking about books again. And I figured it'd be a good idea, since my last two book reviews were about fantasy, I'd talk about science fiction a little bit. And I figure a good spot to start with science fiction is the short story. Uh, there are a lot of great science fiction short stories out there. Uh, I feel like a lot of them haven't been read by a lot of people, and I have three really good anthologies I'm going to tell you guys about today, and hopefully you'll maybe check them out. Maybe you already have read them. Maybe uh, you know, you've read all three. I don't know, but they're they're really good uh, anthologies, and I, I've I've really enjoyed them. Uh, anyways, I'll get right down to it. The first one is the Hard SF Renaissance, and this is published by uh, Tor Books. It is edited by uh, David G. Hartwell and uh, Catherine Kramer. Uh, this is a, definitely a very good uh, anthology. It focuses more on hard science fiction, hence the name. Uh, if you don't, uh, SF is generally an abbreviation for, well, it can it can be known as three things. Sometimes it's called speculative fiction, sometimes science fiction. Uh, some It can even stand for space fantasy in some cases, which it usually doesn't, but... but uh, SF is, is a common abbreviation for science fiction. But anyways, uh, this this anthology includes a lot of the big name uh, writers. Uh, it has really good uh, context on the writers who who are you know, have stories in this uh, uh, anthology. One of the really great stories I really liked was Gene Wars by uh, Paul McC Paul McCauley, which is a really good story, kind of about like uh, you know genetically modified. Uh, Plants and stuff like that, and how it's it's a really good story. Uh, and there, there are obviously a lot more. Uh, Greg Bear has some in this. Uh, Greg Egon uh, has a story in this called Wang's Carpets, which is a very good story. And there is all around just a really good anthology. And I really enjoyed this one. Um, of the three anthologies I'll be talking about tonight, this is kind of the one I like the least. It that doesn't mean it's bad by any means. It's it's extremely good. But uh, I, I think it's kind of lacking in some of the critical context in some cases. But all, all in all, I think it's definitely a good uh, anthology. And it's a good spot to start if maybe you aren't, you know, maybe if you don't read much science fiction and you always wanted to get into science fiction, I think this would be a great spot to start. But that's the first one. Uh, the second one, which I actually got this for a class that I took uh, when I went to Penn College here in, in Williamsport. They had a class called Masters of Science Fiction that I took. And this is the this is what we used for a textbook. It is science fiction stories and context. Uh, the editor is Heather Masry. It's it's uh, published by Bedford St. Martin's. So I mean it, it's it's commonly used as a uh, as a textbook to teach science fiction, and it also has a lot of really really good uh, liner notes for the authors. It has really great context for the stories, and there are actually some uh, articles on science fact throughout this uh, anthology also to kind of go along with some of the themes themes that are that are uh, that are talked about throughout the uh, the anthology but anyways this one is organized very nicely uh, uh, the stories are basically in chronological order but they also group them together into different categories uh, for example I'll, I'll give you an example of uh, what the categories are. Uh, they're grouped into alien encounters, artificial life, uh, time, so like time travel, things like that, utopias and dystopias, disasters and apocalypses, evolutions, and uh, there's also a separate uh, uh, organization that they go into, which is 19th century, uh, 1920s, 1930s, so just kind of like a uh, uh, chronological contents of it, and there's also alternative thematic contents, which are gender, gender uh, race and colonialism, class, nature and the environment, uh, commercialism in the media, religion, satire, science and technology, family and relationships, psychology. So, I mean, obviously there's a lot of, it covers a lot of different grounds, and it's science fiction that kind of deals with a lot of very serious social, political, scientific uh, things going on in the world and whatnot. Uh, some of the writers, uh, Ursula K. Le Guin has a great story in this uh, anthology called um, Bastard and Empires and More Slow, which is incredibly good. Harlan Ellison has a great story in this called Repent Harlequin Cried the TikTok Man, which is probably one of my favorite science fiction short stories, period. Um, Greg Egon's um, Wang's Carpets is also in this one. There's a great uh, story called 
bears to come discover fire, which is probably one of the funniest science fiction short stories I've ever read. It's great. Uh, there's Robert A. Heinlein's um, All You Zombies. There are many, many more. The, the list goes on. Um, Arthur C. Clarke, Nine Billion Names of God. There's stuff from Isaac Asimov, uh, Warren Gibson, pretty much you name it. This anthology has it. has great liner notes. Really, really good context, and it also has a lot of theory, which, uh, I don't know, I've studied a lot of science fiction theory myself, and I really get into that type of thing. I think uh, it's interesting to look at uh, science fiction from more of a critical angle than, I mean, there's more to these stories than just spacemen and aliens and robots. I mean, they're, they're, these writers are trying to cover important topics throughout the world, and, and I, I think uh, that's been sadly overlooked in the science fiction community. And uh, the last of the anthologies that I will be covering tonight is the Wesleyan Anthology of Science Fiction, which this one is my favorite of these three. It's, pro it's probably one of the, the best science fiction anthologies I've, I've read. It is uh, published by Wesleyan University Press. Uh, has a whole team of editors that are prominent in the science fiction, uh, yeah, in science fiction theory. Uh, it, it's just all together... A very, very, very good anthology. Uh, similar to the science fiction context, it uh, is organized several different ways. Uh, it is organized, first of all, uh, chronolo chronologically, from you know, by date. Uh, second, though, it has thematic thematic uh, list of stories, uh, which is alien encounters, apocalypse and post-apocalypse, uh, artificial post-human life forms, computers and virtual reality, Evolution and envi environment, gender and sexuality, time travel and alternate history, utopias, dystopias, war and conflict, and that's it for that. And uh, it's like I said, this is I think this is probably my favorite because this has the best selection of stories. As some stories that are also in this, as Robert A. Heinlein's All You Zombies, which is a very good story, but it has some stuff from H. D. Wells, as the star from H. D. Wells, uh, has stuff from Nathaniel Hawthorne. Uh, which is which is interesting, and, and I think that's you know an interesting story to read because you can kind of go you, know, you can ask the question: Is this actually science fiction? Uh, has Isaac Asimov Isaac Asimov's story Reason? Um, there's Le Guin, Nine Lives, uh, Philip K. Dick. We can remember for you wholesale, which is a very good short story. He's probably one of my favorite science fiction writers. Uh, that's the movie uh, Total Recall is based on this story. Uh, William Gibson, Burning Chrome, uh, Philip K. Dick, I already mentioned him, obviously, but uh, Arthur C. Clarke, uh, Asimov, Robert A. Heinlein, all you zombies is in this one, as I said before. And it's just all together, all around a very, very good anthology. I like this one a lot. Uh, the biggest downfall of these two anthologies is that they are, very ex they are relatively expensive. This one I got pretty cheap because I got it used for my college bookstore, so it was like 13 bucks, I think, when I bought it. But to buy it new, it's probably like forty or fifty. So that's that's a pretty big uh, downfall of of this book, and that that's the same for the Wesleyan anthology. Also, it, it's I think it's like forty or fifty dollars to buy new. Uh, that is the biggest downfall. You might, you, I'm sure you probably find it used on Amazon, or I know this is also used often as a uh, in the classroom for to to teach science fiction, science fiction theory, things of that nature. That is one one of the big you know one of the you know uh, things to bring this up a little bit is that this one is quite a bit cheaper. I think this one's like fifteen dollars new from Amazon. Uh, as I said, it's uh, published by Tor, so that is that would be one reason to get this one over the other two. But I do think that the the story selections are a little bit better in the other two. Uh, that's about it for night for tonight. Uh, if you may have noticed, I'm kind of tired in this video. We just got back from New Jersey Con. And it was just a long, long ride, let me put it that way. But anyways, uh, that's the three science fiction anthologies I want to talk about. Uh, I recommend you pick them up and read them. They're, they have great stories. They're just really good all around. And uh, yeah, definitely. They're, they're, yeah, they're awesome. That's it for tonight. Uh, like and subscribe if you want to see more of these. Uh, comment if uh, you have read some of these. Maybe uh, I can get more in-depth with some of the uh, individual stories later on. I might pick a few out and just kind of go into a critical context type of uh, analysis of those stories. I think that'd be pretty cool. And uh, maybe have like a discussion or something like that. But anyways, that's it for tonight, and uh, I hope you like this video, uh, and have a good night.